Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be back for the second episode of Learning with Eleni. Today, we are talking about explore, exploring the slow burn. So changing the pace, the judgment, and the control in dating. So today's video is focused a lot on the single ladies, our ladies who are dating or getting back into dating or have been dating for a while. Um, and this share is going to touch upon topics about how you share yourself in a date, what kinds of questions you ask in a date, how quick you are to judge while you date, um, giving a chance for men and the universe to surprise you and how your dating experience goes, and giving some space for men to be men so that you can be pursued, you can be desired, and you can do the choosing versus focus on being chosen. And so how I want to talk to you about today's topic is I want to give you this context of two personas. Persona one is Mr. Spark. So, you know, it's the person who we typically look for in date and looking for all the chemistry and the fireworks and the swooning and all of these things. And then there's Mr. Slowburn, who is typically the pleasant surprise that you weren't expecting and you gave a chance when you didn't really think you would have or should have but somehow something good comes of it and so I'm going to be glancing down again so that's why I'm glancing down to my notes to make sure I cover everything and I'm going to try to get this under 20-25 minutes because it's a juicy juicy video and so essentially the reason I'm talking to you about this is because I've been dating for a little over a year. And in that first year, I just went through a bunch of Mr. Sparks. First date, first date, first date, first date, first date. And the way I'm gonna start the analogy is that I got to the point that the last Mr. Spark who I dated or I went on one date with was I was so sure that this was like my search was over and I had gotten so anxious and my nervous system was out of whack that when it didn't go how I wanted it to go, I was just tired of having first dates and tired of this not going anywhere. I was also tired of being friend zoned, which has happened often um, especially with men who I think I have a click or chemistry with. And then after the first date, I realized like, oh, I just want to be friends. And we maintain a friendship, which is beautiful, but I'm not dating to find friends. I'm dating to look for a partner. So the upside of all these first dates is that you get a lot of experience to know what you don't want. And I really do recommend that. I don't recommend just getting into it and choosing the first person who you see and like settling for that. That's not the goal of this lesson on this share. The goal is to see more so the extremes of it and what can typically happen and instead see where your in between is and to see where is your edge of growth. And at the same time, the other good thing of dating is that it gives you the chance to experience expanders, men who you thought you never believed you can date, or you could never find a man who was compatible in that way, whether that had to do with his personality, his emotional intelligence, whether that had to do with his physique and what he looked like, uh, the activities that you shared, his background, his race, his religion, whatever. The point is, is that dating is important, but if you're constantly doing the same thing and it's not leading to anywhere, this is where my flag was like, Eleni, you need to try something different. And so this is what I'm sharing today is the experience of me getting to this point where enough is enough. I've been dating for a year. I'm ready. I am so ready. I've done all the work. I've been single for three and a half years. I've had my dating adventures, but I'm ready to meet my king. And so I wanted to see where is my edge of growth? What was I not doing to the benefit of myself? And how can I step into some discomfort in the name of trying a new way to find a king? And so in June, I met Mr. Spark. 
within the context of the story, the last Mr. Spark. And when I met him, when I saw his profile online, he didn't have any descriptors about him, which typically was something that I had to have, but there was something about him, something about his looks, something about his energy. And I swipe right and I was like, ah, he's not gonna match with me. And I think it was like a day or so after he did. And I was like, man, this hottie matched with me. What are you talking about? And so that just got me excited. And then he sent me the most beautiful message, which made me feel like a complete queen. Like he took the time to answer that message and it was detailed and it was honest and it was naive and it was vulnerable and it was super cute. And it was just the beginning of forthcoming, mature, emotionally deep conversations where we were just sharing with one another. I was giddy as heck. I would be checking my phone because I couldn't wait to hear back from him. And then after a few days of exchanging, um, I think by the end of the week, we organized to go out for a walk. Um, sorry, to go out for a walk uh, near the river where I live. And it was really cute and it was really beautiful. And the thing is that typically since we had already started exchanging very forthcoming things, then I'm like, okay, I feel like I have the green link to be vulnerable. And so I started asking him deep questions, which is trademark Eleni. Deep questions, vulnerability, be bold, be courageous. And I went in, like I deep dive. What are you looking for in a partner? What do you want? Do you want kids? Do you want this? Tell me about your past partners. What didn't work out? What, what are you looking you know, to be better? Tell me about your job. Tell me about your dreams. All of the things. And I know you might be thinking like, whoa, relax, Eleni. But this is who I know to, this is who I am. And I was of the mentality of, I just need to be me. And if they, they're not okay with me, then they'll let me know and it's not a match. So the date was going great. We were walking for like three hours. We went to grab a bite. We were laughing. He was like touching my arm across the table. I was like, wow, this is going great. He brought me home. Um, he followed up right after the date. He followed up the next day. And then he took a step back and it made me nervous. And so then I started reaching out, not because I wanted to, but because I was anxious because of the space. And then he took a step back again. And I only heard from him a couple of days later, learning that he was busy and that's it. He didn't ask about me, didn't make any other plans. And that just sent me into extreme anxiety. Like my, my anxious attachment just completely resurfaced. To make a long story short, he, I, you know, it was clear that he was emotionally unavailable. I was experiencing a horrible week. I cried. I felt sick to my stomach. I felt triggered because in that week and on that date, I was like, check, 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 plus the energy, plus the vibe, plus his looks, plus just his cultural background was the type of person I was looking for. And in my mind, I'm like, the search is over. Like, all we need to do now is practice, but the search is over. Like, this is my man. This is the man who I had envisioned. This is the man on my vision board. This is the man I saw in, you know, my hypnotherapy sessions. Like, I just knew this was my man, but it wasn't my man, right? I got excited with future tripping, with imagining a future because I saw all of the things that I liked. I decided in one week, based on one week of behavior, that this person was the person for me. And I'm not typically like that to decide so quickly, but there was just that spark, that spark, that feeling. And so I had a deep conversation with Diana and the group and I explained everything that was happening. And I said, I don't wanna go on any more first dates that only lead to more first dates. I don't wanna be friend zoned anymore. I don't wanna go through this emotional roller coaster anymore. Something has to change. And so I thought that maybe it had to do a little bit also with the depth at which I was presenting myself, but I wanted to still be authentic. And so Diana tried using some analogies with me. 
And then one day something clicked for me and I finally figured out my own. And I thought to myself, I think I've been like a firework show, you know, going all out for one amazing night, pulling out, still performing without realizing that I'm performing, wanting to go super in depth. And then at the end of the night, the show is over. And plus who wants fireworks every single day? Like it's fun, but after a while, the glossiness, you know, goes over your head and it's not as attractive. And so I really love the sun. My name means who brings the light. Eleni means who brings the light. Whenever the sun is out, I feel great. I'm very joyful. And I said, well, what if I'm instead more of the sun? And when the sun comes out, it doesn't shoot out into the sky. It rises at dawn slowly, giving us a chance to get adapted to its light, to its warmth, to its brilliance, to its boldness. And then by the time it's midway in the sky, we're appreciating it. And then slowly as the day is finishing, we know it's going to go. So we try to appreciate it as much as we can, but we're also comforted knowing that the space is going to let us miss it and knowing that it's going to come back the next day. So Diana supported me on this. She's like, okay, try to be the sunrise at dawn on your next dates. So I took some time to just ground my body after that roller coaster ride of anxiety. And I went back onto the apps and I started to also just be open to maybe widen my preferences, give the chance to the idea that I wasn't going to be able to judge right away, not after one date. So maybe I'm going to have to give a second or a third date to try, even if I'm not sure, as long as there's enough curiosity and attraction. And so one day I matched with Mr. Slowburn. And he was cute. He was interesting. He had written great stuff on his profile. We matched on the fact that he loves to talk and dance, which are big things with me. And I said, okay, I'm going to be the sunrise. I'm going to give him space to be the man. I'm going to give him space. And so I gave him space to initiate every day. We exchanged a couple of days and then he asked me out on our first date. So we went on our first date and the first date was good. It was fun and friendly and full of laughs, but interesting at the same time. And throughout the date, whenever I was going to share, I was like, share just enough to answer and step back, be the sunrise. And it was working. And he would ask me more questions. And I didn't share more than what was asked of me. And I would ask him questions. And I didn't try and make it show, but in my mind, I literally was consciously trying to just do something different and see what happened. And so we had a great date. You know, he was a total gentleman. He, 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 he got the bill. We left. He gave me a, a big hug, super sweet. And that was it. At the end of the date, he wrote to me and say he had a really good time. And guess what? He wrote the next day and he wrote the day after that. And then we went on a second date. And on the second date, I was a little bit more excited, still super grounded. I felt grounded. I was like, oh, you know, the first date was like, it was good. So we'll see. No excitement. Let's be grounded, Eleni. And he's calling me right now. <laughs> and so I went to see him on the second date with a little bit of excitement. And it was. Mm, the energy was a little bit off. It wasn't exactly the same as the first date. And so I left the second date feeling like confused and frustrated. I mean, like but the first date was good. Now the second date wasn't. And I like things about him, but I didn't like the way this is feeling. What do I do? And I know that typically I would have said, mm, maybe let it go and that's it. But I really like this one. There was something that was, hooked my curiosity so I said to myself okay we need to give this slow burn a chance so I waited and we started to schedule a third date and the third date was planned we were going to go do an activity sport activity 
And then his mom got ill with something and he needed to cancel and I was super supportive and it was good. And I was trying to like not get anxious. It's like, well, then you have your things to do and all of these things. And so the third date was postponed. So now it's after the second date, not knowing where this would go. And I wanted to get to the third date to confirm that it would go back to how he was the first date. Like maybe he was just having a bad day, but now it's postponed. And so now I had to wait even more time to see where it was gonna go. And that was really hard and really frustrating. And so I kept at it. And at that point I was getting antsy and the control of how I was gonna schedule the third date was gonna come. And I started to try my old tactics, but for whatever reason, they weren't working. And so I was getting frustrated. And I said, you know what universe, I just surrendered to you. Show me, you know, what's meant to happen with this guy because I don't really know. And we get into this conversation about something random, which led to the context of our third date. And it was an even better third date idea than the original third date, which would also let me know how he felt in proximity, what the real chemistry would be like. And so the third date came along and essentially I went to his house, we ordered in and uh, we watched a, a soccer game and it was beautiful. Like he treated me like a queen. He took my hand like super cute and teenager. Uh, we made out. It was amazing. Um, it was so good. And I was like, oh, okay, now I know how I feel. And the rest of the date was just super cute, super playful bantering, laughing, exchanging, having conversation, enjoying the game, getting to know each other. And since then, there's been a fourth date and a fifth date. And we've been talking for, this is going to be the sixth week that we're talking. And I have no idea where this is gonna go. What I do know is that I'm taking it slow and still choosing and I'm detached from the outcome because I wanna honor myself and him. I'm coming to appreciate who he is as a person versus fixating on what I am looking for. I'm being open for him to show me who he is. And the best analogy I could give is it's like, I have no expectations and I get a green flag and I take it and another green flag and I take it. And my arms are filling up with green flags with this one. And at some point, I'm not gonna be able to hold all of the green flags anymore because there's just so many good ones. And is he exciting? No, he's grounding, it's calming, it's beautiful. It feels like there's no pressure. And so, I'm going to give a few analogies just to finish off of my recap. If I were to compare the spark and if I were to compare the slow burn and how they feel, hoping that it paints a picture of whatever experience you're going through to kind of have an indication to try something different if dating the spark hasn't served you so far. If you wanna continue following the spark, that is up to you for as long as you want to. What I came on to say is I tried the slow burn and it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> it stretched me left, right and center. But now because I tried the slow burn, I'm on date four and five after a year of endless first dates. And I'm hoping to get on, go on to date six because he just called me. So. He keeps on showing up. He hasn't not spoken to me one day. So the spark is like a firework show, slow burn, gradual warming sunrise. The spark is quick to judge and eager to know. I wanna know if it's him, tell me, I need to check all of the boxes as soon as possible. The slow burn is patient and it has a healthy curiosity to discover someone over time. I know there's time, I don't need to run. When I, like, I just, I just want to experience him and we'll see what happens. The spark feels like this initial nervousness, this franticness, the frank, frank, franticness, a giddiness. 
the slow burn feels like neutrality, borderline boringness, boredom. Like after the third date, as beautiful as it was, I still kind of felt like so calm and grounded that I was like, this is a weird feeling. And yet I was still curious. It also feels over time, the spark can feel like a lot of anxiety and ease, getting edgy and triggered. But over time, the slow burn feels like a calm groundedness at the core. It's like you're good, you're steady here, but you also have a light buzzing excitement, like an aura of buzzingness. While here, it's all nice and glowy. The spark is also a lot of premature girlfriend behavior, acting like a girlfriend before you are, checking your phone, resurfacing of anxious attachment. Whereas the slow burn is a queen prioritizing her life and creating space for the king to initiate, which is what I try to do. And if I find myself wanting to check my phone or thinking of him or wanting to initiate, I have to ask, what is behind this? Are you doing this to get attention? Or are you doing this because you just want to share something with them? You know what I mean? There's intense future, fantastical future. There's intense, fantastical future tripping in, in the spark, like thinking of like, oh my God, all of the things that we're going to do. Whereas in the slow burn, there's like, you get little pieces. You're like, mm, okay, I can see how I'm not sure about this, but over time I can appreciate this. And this might be different from what I'm looking for typically, but I can see how it can be a compliment. And I like these characteristics about you. And I think I can grow to appreciate it. And we would make really good, a really good partnership here. So it's an imagining, but it's more so like a, there's a depth to it. There's a quality to it. The spark, you are very much attached to the outcome. I want him to be my guy this fast, this way. Whereas what I'm feeling right now in the slow burn is that I'm appreciative of the opportunity to grow and learn with someone in the present moment, regardless of where it may lead. Would I like this to go further? Yes. If it doesn't, it's okay because I see the type of person he is and I'm valuing the type of person I am. And versus focused on being chosen, which would be my next point, which is the spark, I'm focused on doing the choosing. And that makes me feel so grounded, so, so, so grounded. So I'm hoping it goes somewhere if it's the right match. And if it doesn't, it's because it wasn't the right match. And I'm happy that I got the opportunity to experience something beautiful with somebody beautiful. It also feels, the spark also feels like a quick, exciting splurge. You know, like you go shopping, you're like, ooh, I shouldn't, but I will. But like, it makes me, gives me all the feels, but now it's going to stay in my closet and I might not ever wear it again. So it's like that exciting rush, the adrenaline. But this low burn is a thoughtful and worthwhile investment that returns interest over time. Finally, the spark are big highs and deep lows. I was a mess that week after Mr. the last Mr. Spark. And the slow burn is a deep, welcoming, glowing energy that increases gradually over time. It feels like a hug. It feels safe. It feels like maybe I wouldn't have chosen this off the bat, but the more I try it on for size, the more I like it and the more I want to stay here. So that is what I have for you today, my ladies. My comparison, trying on the slow burn, it really has been an uncomfortable process until now. I don't know if it's going to last. I don't know if, where it will go. The universe will show me. But I'm liking it. And I'm here to tell you that if you're brave enough to try something different and get past all of those first, first, first dates, look for a life partner, not a love partner, and give the slow burn a try. Sending you much love, and I'll see you soon. Bye.